Hi, I'm Tess. Hi, I'm Sarah. And we are... The Happy Edit Sisters. Happiness isn't just being happy. It's an embodied feeling that starts with how we approach life, our actions, and our mindset. Everyone has a range of emotions, and that's a good thing. Join us as we dive into what it means to be happy and how we build a foundation for happiness through different lenses. Hi, Tess. Hi, Sarah. Long time no talk on the podcast. (laughs) definitely definitely we've had a a few months off haven't we kind of recording and things like that so it's nice to it's really nice to be back yeah it is it's really nice to be back and it's nice like I'm I'm glad that we had that break because we can also take like I I don't know about you but I you know I I kind of started re-listening to things as well and thinking okay how can we start to take this forward how can we you know increase like um maybe not increase but like you know, expand what we're doing. Um, and yeah, you know, just, just kind of thinking as well, like a little pat on the back, like, well done us (laughs) that first season. Definitely. Definitely. No, it was, it was, uh, it was a challenge when it the first season, you know, this is the first time we've ever done this before, but it was really enjoyable at the same time as well. Um, Just to let everybody know, in case you can hear my dog, Rosa. So she's joining us today. So, uh, yeah, we might hear a few little snores off her because she's a pug. So she snores when she's awake, not just asleep. Uh, So I thought I'd just let you all know that. (laughs) Oh, we like to have Rosa here. We like to have Rosa here. Um, And, yeah, so I'm... We left off the last season talking about how that we... We were going to go to the south of Spain. We we're going to go to Nerja for holiday together. And I just want you guys to know that that was amazing. It was a wonderful two weeks of spending time with each other, with the families. Um, it was incredibly hot. <laughs> <laughs> I quite but like it the temperature. Really <laughs> you did. You did. You did. Your skin <laughs> tends to deal with that temperature in the sun a little bit better than mine does, though. <laughs> <laughs> no it was it was very very hot um and we yeah it was really nice to spend time with everybody we kind of spent lots of time at the beach and at the pool and uh, lots of time in the water but then we we was able to kind of go up to the Alhambra um in Granada yeah we went up to um, Granada. yeah and we we went down to um Gibraltar as well to see the monkeys so that was exciting that was a really good day out so yeah I got to see the Barry apes they were pretty cool yeah yeah it was it was really really nice day that day actually weren't it it was it was really fun I, I really actually enjoyed all the days but like just like going out to like the Alhambra for example in Granada like I, I that was one of my favorite days yeah because like a the Alhambra is just amazing and last time I was there I was like nine (laughs) so it was really fun to go back and see it again as an adult um but then I also really enjoyed it so um Sarah's girls are really into history especially Mm -hmm. Cora the eldest and they you know they they're really into Catherine of Aragon um and so we were like hey girls like Catherine of Aragon would have grown up here in in the Alhambra and they're like oh you know, so as they were going around, they were so excited. They're like, oh, do you think she walked down this corridor? Like, do you think she was in this room when they were having meetings? Uh, you know, and like just imagining her being there. And I just I just loved it. You know, like that that ability to connect with with history, but then also kind of imagining what it would have looked like, how it would have been back in the time. Obviously, it's very difficult for us to do that, you know, mm-hmm. but like because of their interest, because of you know that that fascination with with history and it's just it's just so fun because I think you know a lot of times young people aren't always that interested in history right it's something that like as we get older we tend to be more open to so it was really fun for me to to see that how excited they were about it oh definitely no I completely agree um yeah they're both really interested in like like Henry the Eighth and his his six wives and yeah and Cora especially Catherine of Aragon as well um 
So it was, it, yeah, it was really, really nice to see them kind of go into those places and be, I think it, it's the baths, isn't it, that's just opened, so the, the bathing area. Um, and when when we were like, yeah, that's where she would have bathed. And yeah, I remember being like, that's amazing. <laughs> just really excited about it. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, it was really fun. It was really yeah. fun to see them just light up, you know, and just be really excited about yeah. about places and not just be there in the background, you know, oh, uh, can we leave yet? You know, where's my phone? Where's my tablet? But like, oh, like, wow, let's look around. Let's explore. You know, it, it was just it was just really fun. Definitely. And especially because it was such a hot day there as well. It must have been about 38 degrees, maybe maybe 40. I think it got there. up to 40, yeah. So it was such <laughs> such a hot day, um. So they did so well because we were there all day, and I mean, my feet were just in bits by the end of the day. So they, they I mean, they did amazing. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah, no, they really did. And if if people are following us on Instagram, we um we took a few pictures and put some stories up, um, from that day as well, from in the gardens and stuff. So, um, if you've not seen them, go back and have a little look at them. Right yeah yeah no it, it, we we did we had fun and then when we were there as well Cora became our unofficial um photographer as well so like we were she's putting up stories for us <laughs> which was pretty fun um but yeah no it, it's it's really it's really fun to it was really fun to, to have that those two weeks of just kind of exploring the south of Spain with with the family and just you know hanging out as well Definitely. No, definitely. And it kind of makes me think about, you know, something that we, we were kind of planning on talking about today was change, weren't it? And, you know, actually seeing the girls, I think they did change over that two weeks. It's definitely been a big change over the summer for both of them. You know, Cora's now gone into secondary school, which I was very anxious about. And I think she was as well. But it's really like flourished in secondary school. She loves it. She's joined loads of groups actually joined the debating group which is amazing um and just yeah he's doing absolutely fantastic really really proud of her and you know and Eva kind of taking it in a stride a big sister no longer being in her school um first day was a little bit kind of emotional for her but now just kind of like yeah bye mom love you bye and off she off she trots um but even when we were in Spain, seeing them in the water and seeing Aoife, kind of how much she kind of developed and, you know. Oh, she just thing... blossomed, didn't she? Yeah, it was so lovely to see. It really was. It really was. It was really fun. Like at the beginning, she was still a little bit unsure. And by the end, it was just like, you couldn't get out of the pool. She was asking us like, how do you dive? You know, okay, so like. Your, you Michael myself you know we were constantly like trying to teach her how to dive and she didn't quite get it but she was getting there you know and just like over and over and over just trying 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 like you know and it, it was just it was just really really fun to see that progression even just within a couple of weeks like going from still not totally sure about being in the water you know to like okay I'm gonna dive in <laughs> Yeah, you know, definitely, definitely. I think there was one day that we'd been to the beach and we'd come back and it was maybe, maybe four-ish when we came back and it was like, are we going in the water now? Are we going in the water? And I was like, right, hang on a second. Let me just go get a drink. Let me get some towels. And I um, think, think we must have left the swimming pool at quarter to eight, eight o'clock or something. I'm like, yeah. right, and just 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. And I must have said that 10 times to her um, because she just wouldn't come out of the water. She was just loving it. I mean, yeah, that water wasn't exactly cold, right? But there was one point where she was just like, her lips were just getting a bit blue. It's like, okay, you need to come out. You know, <laughs> like you're getting cold. <laughs> yeah, you're turning into a prune. <laughs> we are not fish. <laughs> we do need that dry. <laughs> Uh, but no it was it was fun and 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 like you say like you know it's it's fun to watch those changes and I think when as as a young person it's more easy to see those changes right because they are so much more adaptable in general you know to to their environment to their surroundings and you know yes there's going to be moments where they're freaked out you know they're stressed because they've got something new but then as soon as they get in it you know in general they're like okay 
this is fine. I'm okay. And then they're, you know, they're just yeah. diving in the deep end, right? They're not like worrying about all the other things. Now, once again, this is all generalizing, right? But as adults, I think we struggle with change a little bit more because we more compartmentalize things a little bit, uh, quite a bit yeah. more, you know? And so like when change happens, it makes us a lot more anxious because we start thinking about all these other things that could go wrong. Maybe other past experiences that we've had, right? That like, oh, well, <laughs> this could happen because that happened then. And that could happen because I, that happened to a friend of mine, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so we're much more reluctant for that change. And it is, it can be much more of a, you know, a hurdle for us to mm. to adapt to those new situations where I think in general, you know, kids are, find it easier to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I suppose we kind of get trapped in those what if questions, don't we? Like you've just been saying then is, you know, we we get involved in those loops of what ifs and and then, you know, we start to kind of really imagine and procrastinate over that as well. And in some ways, and that becomes like that reality, even though that's not happened, our brains naturally interpret that as, oh, well, that's that is what's going to happen, or that is what is happening. And we then completely try and avoid that situation, or you know, we hold back and and don't kind of throw ourselves into those new challenges and those new experiences when actually if we tried it as we've kind of just suggested with Cora and Aoife you know if we try it it might not be as scary as what we think it's going to be we actually might really enjoy it um Mm -hmm. and I think that's something I think that's something really important to you know to kind of remember and I suppose take that inspiration from the girls actually in some ways as well of, of us continuing to throw ourselves into those challenges, do things that might make us feel uncomfortable, that we might feel nervous about. Um, something that I always kind of think about and ask myself is, well, what's the worst that's really going to happen? Yeah, yeah, and some, exactly. So, sometimes that question is really hard to answer. And then also like, what's the best that can happen, you know, and flip it around. Like, especially if we're in like constantly going in those worst case scenarios, like, but, but what if something amazing happens, you know, and like, okay, well, let's, let's focus on that as well. You know? So I think like, as you say, you know, there's there's kind of, it's not bad to look at either side of it and just kind of remember Mm -hmm. like, okay, literally what is the worst? Okay. uh, I could be a little bit embarrassed. Okay, fine. Oh, or I could gain a lot from this. Like I could find a new hobby. I could meet Mm -hmm. some cool people. I could just have a cool experience to tell people about, or, you know, just to remember, you know, for myself or just, I can just feel Mm -hmm. awesome that I've done it, you know, and like whatever it is, but it's, it's, I think so often Mm -hmm. we get caught up in, as you're saying, in in those what ifs and then not really realistically looking at those what ifs, just like allowing our imagination to like go out and just be like, yeah. oh, but there's so many other things that could go wrong or that it could be scary or I could make, you know, a complete fool of myself. And and don't get yeah. me wrong, like we both do this as well. Like we're saying this oh, yeah. as we know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. Condition, for sure. Definitely, definitely. And I do think you're right. I think it is about having both those questions in mind, you know, whenever we're faced with these challenges is, okay, so what, what is the worst that's going to happen? How likely is that to happen? What, well, if it does happen, well, what does that mean? It, it, is it really as big as what we think it's going to be? And then exactly like what you said, like, what could what, what's the potential what's what are those positive things that could come from throwing yourself into that situation um a little example that I think I've got is so a few years ago I was asked to do some training and this training was going to be in front of lots of different professionals who were you know you had like lots of doctors there lots of other mental health kind of professionals lots of health professionals I think there might have been some police um there as well and people from schools so I was delivering this three-hour session and I'd put it off and put it off and put it off and you know I was doing it with someone else as well so that was like a bit of a support 
And I remember thinking, like, what, what if they think I don't know what I'm saying? What, what if I, what if everything I say is wrong? And then imposter I was like, imposter syndrome. Yeah, <laughs> proper imposter syndrome coming through. Um, what if I get muddled up with my words? And that kind of goes back to childhood and not really enjoy reading out loud in English and things like that. And I was like, what if I get muddled up with my words? What if I don't know what that word says? What if I have to put something on the board and I can't spell it, which is probably highly likely. And I kind of then was like, I built myself up, built myself up, all those procrastinating kind of ideas and, you know, catastrophizing questions. And I kind of got closer to the time. And I remember the day before just being, oh, Sarah, it'll just be what it'll be. Like, yeah, what if you do get your words muddled up? What if you do spell something wrong? By five o'clock, you'll have finished it and it'll have been done and it'll be whatever it'll be and it'll be done and that's it. It'll just be done. And I remember going in, it was in the afternoon. I remember going in and the first thing after I kind of introduced myself and kind of went around and said hello to people was said like, you know, just bear with me because this is the first time I've ever done this. You know, and actually we, we did like a bit of a rating of, how people were feeling in the room and I rated myself as well um and just naming it really helps naming do you know what I feel really nervous and that's okay I feel yeah. like what if this goes wrong that's okay um so yeah I thought that I'd, I would share that with everybody yeah no and and you know I have something sort of similar so um I was invited to be um, to, to be part of um, a summit which actually starts today the, the when this uh, episode is getting launched so if anyone wants to, to join it's a free summit it's called power up your voice uh summit and it's all about like a transformative well-being summit where you'll learn how to be seen heard and empowered by your authentic self and I'm a part of this with um, some amazing coaches and when I was originally invited to be on it um I was like, uh, um, no, like I am so not like at the same level as these other people, you know, like they, they, they just seemed like so much like light years ahead of me. And I was like, oh, I don't know about this. Am I good enough to be on this? Like, oh, it's scary. I've never been on like a, in the summit before. I've never been part of it. Like I've been to a summit. I've listened to other people, but I've never actually been in the summit myself. Um, and like, you know, like very similar ideas. Um, but, I, you know, I've, I've been helping set it up. And, you know, as we're working together, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a key player in creating the summit. And I'm like, you know, you know, maybe they, they do have experience in other things, like more than I do, but I have like a, quite a bit of experience. And, and when we're talking like through things, I'm like, you know, actually, I've got this, I've got this. Like, I still have my moments and I'm like, oh. But like, you know, the, the more that when I'm in it and I'm being, in, I'm involved in it, I'm like, okay, actually I can hold my own, you know? And it is, it's, it's that, it's, it's allowing yourself to be a part of it. Because at the beginning I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I should accept this offer, you know, like mm -hmm. scary. But then now it's like, actually, you know, I'm sure on the day, I'm sure I'll have moments I'll be like, ha -ha. <laughs> but like mm -hmm. in general, you know, I, I, like, and they've been really warm and welcoming as well, you know, really supportive. We've all been really supportive of each other, which has been really fun as well. Um, talking about this transformative well-being event, right? And we're, we ourselves, like, in creating it, have had this transformative well-being, like, connection with each other, which has been a really, really beautiful part of it. But I think, you know, so often we kind of have to take those steps out of our comfort zones mm -hmm. to to then realize our power realize that we have this ability right and we have a lot of amazing abilities and maybe they're not exactly the same as someone else right which we're yeah. initially comparing ourselves to but that doesn't mean that they're not important in mm -hmm. their own way um <laughs> and beautiful in their own way and I think you know taking these experiences like like you were saying in in your um conference that you had or you know in, in this case in the summit you know like you start to realize like okay like I can grow I can learn and I gain so much from it 
and if you know if I make a couple mistakes here and there just laugh them off <laughs> like I'm all, you know we're we're all human you know we're not, none of us are perfect like you know cyborgs Absolutely. or anything <laughs> Definitely, definitely. We we exactly we're all human, and you know I'm not the biggest public speaker in the world. Like I, I'm definitely it's definitely a challenge, but I do think that kind of that opportunity really pushed me outside of my comfort zone to to be able to do the podcast, to be able to do lots of different things that I do now. You know, even the very first thing that I put on Instagram, I was like, I remember speaking to you and being like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's like just do it Sarah yeah. I'll just do it um <laughs> Tess where can they where, where can our listeners and um, where can they find more information about the summit and how to log in and and things like that oh yeah 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 thank you I forgot to mention that <laughs> <laughs> see always learning um uh this is why we have our support teams you know um, mm-hmm. So I will put a link in the show notes. Um, but if you just go to Facebook, um, the whole summit will be on Facebook. It's free, as I said. Um, just put up, put in "Power Up Your Voice Summit," um, and you can join. Um, we have some questions just to get to know you a little bit better and see how we can best support you and add, you know, more value to you. Um, and then we'll we'll let you in to to the summit itself. Um, and as I said. Um, it starts on the 18th, which is the launch day of this, so September 18th. So if you're watching the replay of, or listening, I should say, to the replay of this, um, you know, see if it's still available. I'm, I'm not sure how long uh, we're going to keep the, the summit out there. Um, I think maybe for a few weeks um, and then mm-hmm. we'll close up. But I don't actually know that for a fact. Um, so just try <laughs> because it might all still be there um and it, it's from the monday the 18th to um friday the 22nd um my interview is coming out tomorrow the 19th if you're listening to this in real time um but it's you know you can you can watch it for the the rest of the week um and then we'll have um a like uh sort of don't want to call it a Q&A what, what did we have we had a better name for it anyways it's like a, a gathering on on the the Friday where all of us coaches that are in it will open it up and um have you know times that we can connect with with the people that are part of the summit and you can ask us questions and um yeah it should be really fun brilliant brilliant oh that sounds amazing definitely everybody kind of go and have a look at at the summit and and kind of join in as much as you you can if that's something that you're interested in um it sounds amazing well I'm I'm so I'm so pleased for you Tess it's it's yeah I feel dead proud because it's it is such a big thing to be a part of isn't it so it is it is oh one other comment um I've got a really good discount on an upcoming event that I'm hosting and I'm offering that in the summit so if you join the summit you'll get 50% off um so just 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 a, another enticement <laughs> yeah yeah definitely um definitely. but no I, I I I agree and thank you thank you yeah no it's it is an accomplishment it, a it was an accomplishment just to be asked to be a part of it um I at least I felt it was at, at the same time of being terrified I was also like oh oh someone someone thinks I'm I'm worthy <laughs> <laughs> um and then yeah then just being a part of set, setting it up and um you know and and learning along the way as well like like I said like you know it's it's been a huge learning curve for me um uh, being a part of this and it's 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 just been really fun yeah but well deserved because you know for people who who know Tess personally but also you know from all the work that she does online and social media platforms and things like that Tess works really really hard so um it's very well deserved Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Something that we were thinking about, um, so when, when we were talking about change um, a little earlier before we kind of came on to the podcast was about kind of the change of seasons as well and how that might impact on us, us personally. And we've had a little chat, haven't we, away from the podcast about this as well. And, and I know that, that that's something that, 
I've recognized over the years, I do find that quite difficult sometimes, especially going from from summer into autumn. Now, if everybody that knows me knows I do like the sun and I do like the heat. And obviously she is not the too sun goddess. <laughs> it was a bit too hot here <laughs> last week, so <laughs> a bit too um, humid. But for me, there's something about the change of season. Um, once I'm in that new season, so once I'm in autumn, I embrace autumn and I love autumn and I, I love those crisp days where it's just a bit kind of um, a bit icy on the ground. And, you know, and I, mm. I love those days. I love the colours of the trees and the leaves falling off the trees. And we've got, um, I have no idea what it's called. My mother-in-law won't be happy with me. Um, it's like a something that kind of trails along the bushes that turns red. Yes, you might know what it's called. Can't think of what it's called. Um, Are we talking about a plant? <laughs> yeah, plant. It's like a little, oh. yeah, it's like a trailing plant that turns red. That's kind of, it's probably just smothering the other bushes, to be fair. Um, Is it like a type of ivy? I don't know if I've paid attention to it. Maybe, maybe. I'll try and find out. <laughs> um, and I love that. I love that part of, of autumn. And, um, but I do, yeah, I do notice that. I find it quite hard to go, kind of go from those longer days to the darker nights to that change of of weather. Um, I think it's something to do with the freedom that I feel more in in the summer as well. Yeah. Um, and the time that we get, or I I know I get to spend with my children over the summer holidays. Um, so yeah, so coming back from holiday when we was in Nurka. So then I know you guys came over and that was really exciting. We went to a lovely wedding and we got to spend another week with you, which is amazing. We've, we've been able to spend so much time with you and Michael over this yeah, year, definitely. which I'm so grateful for. Um, but then I knew as soon as she's left, I was like, oh, summer's over now. <laughs> and now it's back to reality. Oh, I totally agree. That first week back after being back from Nerja, not Nerja, from Manchester, was just like a slap in the face of reality like uh because I never like fully took off this summer um I was still you know working but just not full time and, it, <laughs> and even still it was just like uh this is so not what I want to be doing so you know, I know I get that I think it's it's as you say like it goes from that freedom those long days you can feel like you can get more done because you have that much more light you know and the, to, then that change of longer nights um and you know you maybe don't feel like you can go outside as quite as much because maybe the weather isn't as nice or you have to work more because it's not holiday mode for you know almost mm. everyone um and I, and I I totally agree with that I think that you know those those transitions can be can be quite difficult and I think it's really important that we notice that you know, and we acknowledge it and we don't just shove it away, but we, you know, we are compassionate with ourselves when, when we have these moments going, oh, wow, there's that change. Like, you know, it's a change Mm. that we know is going to come. Like, it's not like we've never lived these changes before, you know, (laughs) every year, every year, (laughs) (laughs) but at the same time, it's still difficult. And I, and, you know, I think it's important that we are compassionate with ourselves and, you know, and just acknowledge it. Like you were mentioning earlier, not just just sort of labeling that that feeling of being nervous right mm-hmm. like it's okay to be nervous it's okay to to be a little like oh what's going on with this change whether it's a change of season or a change of a life event you know and and I think um for me personally I like to look at change of seasons very much as like it introspective like take a little time to like really tune in especially as we're moving into like the sort of the more um cooler months right and that's sort of like I just feel like you know autumn and winter tend to be this much more introspective time um mm-hmm. for for life in general yeah. you know not just for yeah. us humans but like you know you start you know, animals are starting to to hibernate or, you know, to fill up so that they can hibernate fully, you know, like mm-hmm. things are starting mm-hmm. to die down. Plants are starting to, you know, to start to not maybe be as prolific as they were in the summer. 
Um, and so we're seeing that all around us as well. And our bodies are responding to that. So even if we don't acknowledge it, maybe mentally, like subconsciously, there's there's changes happening and we're noticing those changes around us. And I I personally, as I said, I I, I like to take that time to just, you know, take a little time for me, maybe sit down with my journal and just write about it or just let, you know, just kind of tune in and spend a little time, you know, going for a walk and mm-hmm. just, you know, just allowing the thoughts to come, allowing those emotions to come. And then, you know, but then at the same time, letting them go, like not holding on to any one in particular, just just acknowledging it and saying, oh, OK, this is what's going on for me. And, and I, I find that quite beneficial in in adjusting to the changes of the seasons. Definitely, definitely. And autumn's one of your favorite times of year as well, isn't it? You kind of like going yeah. into these love it these months. <laughs> um, we we kind of the, the opposite in the temperature scale. I like it hot. Tess likes it look cooler. <laughs> um, but I completely agree. I think it is about noticing, isn't it? It's about noticing what that change is, what that change feels like, how that's resonating in your body and your emotions and your thoughts and your behaviors maybe and then also kind of thinking I think I suppose this is from from my perspective in my current kind of life experiences as well or life cycle maybe is that obviously there's a lot of change going on in in my family with Cora going off to secondary school so that brings about lots you know it, it kind of coincides with the change of season and that life cycle change as well so I think that maybe this year for me I've noticed it even more and I think for our listeners I think it's really important to kind of think okay so what else is going on around me as well during this moment of change during this season of change um you know quite a lot of people that I went to kind of school with that you know were my peers they're in very similar situations to myself as well you know their children are kind of getting to that point of transitioning um into their new phase of life um Mm -hmm. so yeah I think for our listeners just take take a moment notice stop for a minute just kind of what else is going on as well that might be contributing to that feeling Mm -hmm. as well as the the current changes of season Um, yeah Tess, I thank you for our happy edit tool that we like to, to provide every episode for the listeners. But you've you've got a, a really nice tool this week. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, but and then I just want to kind of touch back what you were saying about feeling it in the body as well, right? Like it's really important that, you know, not only do we notice these thoughts and these emotions, but we notice where we're holding them and where we feel it physically because it is very much connected they're not different things right like when we feel an emotion this triggers different plexuses in the body and then that's going to hold it in different places in the body Mm -hmm. and just being really mindful of that um you know and supporting yourself physically um as well as mentally you know and maybe just taking time as you're saying just to pause and and to really just allow yourself to be and to rest is really, really important. Um, because so often, you know, when these changes are happening, we're not, we're just kind of wanting to get through them. So we just kind of push through them. And that's a very physical thing as well. Like maybe we start like, just like, okay, like, let's just move my body out of it. Um, and I think it is really important just to take that time to, to stop to pause Mm. allow your body to rest and to sort of notice what is happening physically mentally emotionally and spiritually as well right like it's all Mm -hmm. it's all connected Um, and this 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 is very much in connected with the the happy edit tool so the happy edit tool that we thought we would share this week is um i actually created a little uh mini ebook about it um i call it my 10 minute method um but what it is is you know every morning um w- when you wake up maybe in bed maybe like before you get out of bed you know or maybe if you have like a morning shower like I tend to like in the morning showers as well because mm-hmm. you know it's just it's calming and just kind of moment of pause in my shower right um to to just ask yourself like how am I feeling and check in 
physically, like scan through your body physically, scan through your body intellectually, scan through your body emotionally. And, you know, if you feel comfortable with it, scan through your body spiritually and just notice where you might be holding things, right? You could be holding these emotions, these thoughts, these, you know, whatever it is in your body and just A, be compassionate with it, you know, notice it with compassion, no judgment, right? Like we, as we talked about before, you know, we're all human. We have these emotions and that's okay. You know, so just meet yourself where you are and then ask yourself, what is one small thing that I can do to support myself, right? And so that's where that 10 minutes comes in is it's, I'm going to give myself 10 minutes today, you know, on a consistent basis. If you can do it every day, awesome. But, you know, as best as you can on a consistent basis. And, you know, and so often we think, oh, I don't have 10 minutes. Like we we have all these things we have to do, you know, all this stuff. But re- realistically, if you think about it, you have, um if you spend 10 minutes a day doing something that is way more time than if you were to take an hour a week right so you're really showing up for yourself more even though it doesn't feel like it right it's like well what could 10 minutes really do well it can do a lot but then at the same time 10 minutes is too much well if we give ourselves that time then we're actually able to do a lot more because we're able to rest we're able to start releasing that tension mm. that stress that we're holding in the body and stress isn't just oh you know like oh there's a stressful situation it's in my head it's like it is 100% physical mental and emotional right and it's really important that we realize it because stress can do so much to us it's not just you know I'm having a bad day, but it can lead, you know, the, when it's a persistent stress, which most of us are in, right? We don't allow ourselves that time to mm. to rest, to tune in, to give something back to ourselves. And that can lead to, you know, things like headaches, migraines, back pain, other aches and pains in the body. It can lead to things like anxiety, depression. It can lead to irritable bowel syndrome. It can lead to heart issues. It can lead to breathing problems. Like this is, it's not just yeah. a, like, a, you know, one, and it's not one size fits all. Of course, everything, you know, depending on you, you're going to respond in different ways. Um, and our body needs to release it in some mm-hmm. way, right? And um, if we do this consistent meeting ourselves, then we are releasing it every single day and it's not like this big explosion so the other day we had um quite a big storm here and you know like for weeks now we've had like this heavy humidity and it's just been like horrible right and then all Mm -hmm. of a sudden the other day we had like three storms in one literally all (laughs) surrounding the city and it was epic right And it's that like the earth, it just needed to get rid of it. And that's what our body does, right? The more we hold on to these things that gets stored in the body. And then all of a sudden it needs to release it. So how does it release it? It releases it in ways that maybe aren't very beneficial. So, you know, meeting yourself, like Sarah is saying on, you know, asking yourself, noticing, how am I doing? And then giving back to yourself. What is one small thing that you can do for yourself? Is that to take a little break? Maybe that little break is just sitting down with a cup of coffee or a a tea, uh, no phone, no TV, no Mm. nothing, and just tuning in. Maybe that break is going for a little walk, getting some movement in. Maybe that break is putting your legs up the wall and just letting your body rest fully. Maybe that break is meeting up with a friend because you haven't met up with friends before, right? Like it doesn't have to look like something specific, but it's creating that, that, intra communication with yourself right which is often what causes the friction of change in us because we don't have that communication with ourselves we shut that off because we it's uncomfortable and it can definitely be uncomfortable and if it is very uncomfortable reach out reach out to your friends your family to a therapist to a coach to you know whoever it is that you have that you can get support from um but it is, it you know, when we do it little by little, we take these little steps, it seems insignificant. And what really is it going to do? But really, it 
it makes a huge, huge change. It yeah. goes from our bodies releasing that epic storm to just having these little, you know, waterfalls. <laughs> right? little, little showers, little showers. <laughs> these, these little showers, exactly, exactly. It's like being in Manchester. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, here too, here too. Um, uh, so if you're interested in getting a little bit more support with this tool, the 10 minute method, I actually, as I said, I have a little um, ebook that I wrote and you can, um, I'll put a link in to the, um, the show notes for it, but it's tessjewelarson.coach forward slash freebie as well. If, if you want to just look it up. And as I say, it's free. Um, and it, it takes you through the, the method. So you have it, so you can remember it, but then I also give you, um, four weeks of, um, like a little calendar that you can fill out. And, um, so you can have it as a visual thing as well. And uh, maybe you can put it on your wall and just be like, okay, yes, like I've showed up for myself today. This is how I'm supporting myself today. Uh, you know, have a little affirmation there as well. I love me. I love me some affirmations. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, definitely. You know, I've seen the, I've seen the ebook and, and the, yeah, the, the calendar, the, is really, really good. Really, really good. You know, people could, like you say, could put it on the wall. They could laminate it so they can rub it off, um, and just yeah. keep using it. Um, it is really, really good, and everybody loves a good freebie. Oh, uh, you know, I I love me some frisbees. I frisbees, frisbees. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, we I, all, we I all download them a, a lot. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> what Definitely. can I learn here? <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. But yeah, everybody, you know, take a look at it. It's really, really good. It's really helpful. Um, something just to add a little bit is that we we sometimes think we're just taking time out and scrolling on our phones. Maybe that might not be kind of giving ourselves that 10 minutes. Um, it might be for some people and that's okay. But maybe just have a little bit of think about that. You know, if I've got 10 minutes to go on certain video automatic playing things um then you know maybe maybe we can take that 10 minutes to do something else as well yeah I'm not saying that we can't go on these videos watch these short clips um because some of them are very good um but yeah just take that time out so maybe also do something else yeah yeah exactly exactly and you know it's and and explore see what works for you you know like I think so often we get in to these ideas that oh well this person said this so I'm going to do that right and and maybe it helps but maybe it doesn't help you know so explore to see you know how can you shift it how can you change it to make it support your needs in that moment you know I think it's like it goes back to that that communication and that that supporting yourself of you know what do I really need right now um and which isn't always an easy question to ask and, you know so just do you know sometimes it's just showing up and just doing something and then noticing actually maybe this wasn't what I needed right now but at least I showed up for myself you know yeah definitely and then if you definitely. don't do it as well don't you beat yourself up <laughs> like no you know, like, no compassion compassion that's helpful. <laughs> yeah yeah always be compassionate and kind to yourself yes 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 well thank you Sarah for this a wonderful reintroduction the season one I'm so season two excuse me first episode of season two. Oh goodness um I'm so used to saying season one season two <laughs> we're in season two <laughs> definitely no it's been so lovely to to have a real good catch up and I really hope that people have enjoyed kind of listening to what we've been up to over the summer um you know and and yeah kind of what what we're kind of working forward looking forward to even um as we move forward with the podcast and we've got some amazing guests that we have got coming on we've done a couple of interviews already which is great um so yeah I look forward to everybody hearing um what our guests have to say um when yes. we're thinking about happiness Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. And as always, you know, we would love to hear from you. So, you know, if you want to tell us how your summer was, um, send us a message on Instagram. Um, 
the dot happy edit if you you know want to tell us how much you are enjoying this podcast hopefully you are enjoying it um uh, you know leave us a review on um itunes or spotify um we you know we really love to hear from you and hear how this is benefiting you um, and then also learning how you know we can adapt it and change and offer things that that um that will benefit you more as well um and also on the bonus note if you review it and um, this helps get the podcast out to more people um so that hopefully you know it can help them uh, create more happiness in their lives as well so all in all we we love to hear from you um and we really appreciate it when you do give us that that lovely five star is that presumptuous to say rating <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely thank you everybody for listening today it's been so nice to spend time with Tess again on here so we hope you've enjoyed it bye bye everyone at the happy edit podcast be mindful that the podcast is not in replacement of therapy if you do need further support please do contact us on our contact details in the show notes and we're more than happy to offer further support and guidance and direct you to places like the counseling directory or therapy directories if you do also need further support we'd also recommend you contact your primary health care provider thanks very much for listening and we'll see you all soon